guys, welcome back to Conifera. In uh, my most recent video, uh, I uh, touched on the uh, City Skylines 2 announcement, the trailer and uh, my own wish list for the game. <laughs> Safe to say, I am uh, super hyped and I'm really, really anticipating the uh, the release. Uh, but until we, uh, we get so far, then of course we're just gonna continue chugging along with our established series because, uh, you know, the announcement of City Skylines 2 and all the hype surrounding it doesn't take away from the, uh, you know, uh, fantastic fun we are already having with uh, City Skylines 1. Uh, feels really weird to say City Skylines 1. Um, any anyways, uh, the last uh, video we did here in Conifera, we built this area we are having a look at right now, just south of the downtown core of the main city of Port Douglas in our region. Uh, and we, uh, we we strive for a pretty dense look and I think it's safe to say that we've achieved that. Um, and overall I'm really happy with the result. I've made a few changes uh, off camera which I'll just uh, go through uh, quickly. So uh, for one I've just kind of increased the density uh, just a bit by for instance copy pasting this a uh, single building here a bunch of times to create a bit of a more complex structure um, being as this is basically waterfront property next to a, a future beach it's uh, probably pretty high in value so we might also make some more changes here um, as we as we move along but for now I think this is this is fine I've kind of done the same trick over here where I've, where I've just added a copy of this building on top of the uh, already established one to create a bit of a, a bit, bit of a denser look, um, and then uh, the, I guess the biggest change, which was actually visible in one of the cinematics from the previous episode, is that I've uh, gone ahead and added a ton of planters and trees to align the streets here. Um, and I think that when you compare, uh, you know, uh, these streets that are sort of bare with uh, with these detailed ones, then you know the um, the results speak for themselves, it really adds a lot of character, um, especially like these planters. I, I PO'd them to make them a little bigger and wider, and they're inspired by the fantastic planters and old trees I saw in uh, Manhattan, specifically in uh, you know the village, in Greenwich Village. Um, there are some fantastic old tree-lined street, streets with the uh, old brownstones, and uh, these planters in particular just felt really iconic to the area. So I've used those extensively, uh, but I've also kind of experimented with uh, with other planters, as we can see here. 
uh, we've got some big planters with uh, that that has room for some big uh, shore pines, and then we've got these uh, smaller planters here along the road. So that's uh, probably something I'm gonna continue on with uh, in this episode when we've expanded the city a little more, um, because it, it really does add some detail and some character. Now there's a there's a small area here that I I think I mentioned in the last episode of Coniferia I wasn't all that content with and it's this sort of a plaza here with these two uh, PO'd residential towers and they look cool but they also sort of look low detail due to their you know the simplicity of their designs and I wasn't quite sure about it and it seems uh, that a few of you guys at least uh, through your comments uh, also noted that it, it looked a little a little odd um, and uh, and one of you uh, uh, Voita Bache I'm, I'm sorry if I butcher your name man uh, came with a, a really nice suggestion for revamping it and maybe picking a, a different structure altogether um, so uh, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that and um, there's also suggestions for you know a specific uh, asset creator um, which is uh, which is also awesome. Um, so I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna find smileys because uh, the assets from smileys are all, always super high quality. I'm gonna add a building height limitation so that I don't want to see any buildings here that are below uh, 30 meters uh, because I'd like something red at all to be placed here. And then I just need to find the, uh, the right fit. And I think this one is a pretty good candidate. It's a little more generic looking uh, than these buildings, but it's also more complex looking, so it doesn't look uh, as out of place. So I think I'm gonna I'm gonna try and swap up, swap up, <laughs> swap out these two and replace it with this one instead. And uh, of course, uh, you'll have to have me excused because I'm gonna have to go uh, ham with procedural objects to to get a good fit here uh, because it, it is a bit of an awkward lot right so uh, that's just how it is so uh, let's let's just re-ramp this uh this this little space here uh, before we move on because first i'm gonna go in and i'm gonna delete the two existing structures and i'm gonna grab these uh residential blocks that basically simulate all the citizens and move them to the side and then I guess I'm gonna also have to probably I can always remove uh, this node actually because I'm probably gonna need you know an entrance and exit node uh, or path rider to the to the other building so we're gonna stick with that for now uh, but uh, I think uh, these planners they they probably have to go At least for now, we can we can move them out here. Then we can always uh, we can always include them if need be. All right, the new building we're gonna hit Alt P to turn it into a procedural object. Then I'm gonna have to figure out the initial alignment. So it's got this uh, small kind of annex almost attached to it. We can of course always remove that, but for now, uh, we probably need to consider that when placing the building. So I think. If we do, it's also got these balconies, which I suppose you would face towards the sea, ideally. So I think we're gonna we're gonna place it like this, initially at least. Which also means I'm gonna I'm gonna move some of this stuff out of the way. First up, we're gonna just do some simple distortion to see if we can uh, we can get a good uh, good enough fit without doing much more customization than that. I'm just gonna adjust the height though because it's got these nice stairs, that, and I want a few of them to show. There you go. So the initial distortion I do is just about, you know, just trying it up basically <laughs> and seeing and seeing how it looks. Um, so if I can grab, can I grab this node? Oh, I, I have it grabbed.
All right, so I, I'm actually kind of happy with this. Um, I, I thought this annex would be a big issue, but I don't think this is too bad. It, it looks really cool the way it has this really slender, uh, almost flattering building look to it. Uh, so I think that's actually a really cool, 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 uh, cool fit. I'm just gonna jump into PO again and see if there are some, you know, if it makes sense to do some extra additions. Are uh, awesome extra train, uh, changes rather. Right, let's have a look. I I made some additional changes, as you guys could see. So let's just get some better light in here. Let's see. So I uh, I choose to extend parts of this facade outwards because it seemed that you know there there is a pretty large uh, sort of empty area here, and I guess you know developers that like to maximize the space just a little more. I can imagine this uh, this parcel here being rather expensive. And the uh, this development in total being a little expensive as well. Uh, Height-wise, I'm actually kind of happy about it. It it seems like we're we're slowly working towards a much more you know uh, diverse skyline, and that this uh, sort of arbitrary height limit that we've kind of worked with for many episodes now has sort of been broken up, and we are now seeing uh, some towers that you know become they are more key defining. You know they're more defining buildings in, in their own ways and in their own areas. So I really like how we are sort of breaking that up and uh, working working taller. Um, I think uh, I'm gonna do a bit of detailing of this uh, this area here because it was a little more detailed before, but I think for instance, these planters, we can pretty much just let them stay. That looks pretty cool. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for the feedback uh, and I hope I hope uh, Wojcia, that you uh, that you like this uh, this setup here. Uh, let me know how you feel about it. I'll uh, I'll call this the uh, the Voita Residentials or something cool. Actually, you can name the building uh, yourself. So uh, go ahead and let me know in the comment what this should be named. It's a new luxury construction, and obviously uh, we've got some pretty fantastic views. Look at that. You can uh, you can look all the way to Pine Harbor actually. Yeah, so as I said, just gonna detail up this a bit and then we'll uh, we'll move on uh, further south.
right with the detailing done um we're gonna we're gonna move on uh i'm gonna prettify this area just a bit before we whoa damn <laughs> we're gonna prettify this area just a bit before we turn our attention south um, but uh, something I'd really like some input on as well is uh, the name of this district because uh, I'm thinking that, you know, downtown is uh, sort of stops here uh, where I've marked it so far. So we've obviously got an entirely different district here, which is also going to be relatively high density, uh, not quite the same density as downtown Port Douglas, uh, but still quite dense. Uh, and I'm also considering having like a row of uh, luxury uh, apartment towers here and maybe a few hotels uh, due to the, the fantastic location, maybe a marina as well. Um, but for now, this is uh, Rosewood. Um, let's just call it Rosewood. I'd love some input from you guys to what we can call this area. So, uh, and it would be really cool if you guys keep the, the characteristics in mind for this area. It's going to be a transitionary zone, of course, where that density is slowly going to lower as we move towards the outer skirts of the area and further away from downtown. Uh, but generally, it's going to be a busy area full of, you know, uh, pretty high density uh, apartment buildings, uh, shopping areas, uh, and of course, this... Um, recreational area down here it's uh, adjacent to the beach uh to the the forest and the the mountain ranges so if you keep that in mind what would you call an area like this initially i thought of actually calling it midtown or uh, not not specifically as a reference to midtown in manhattan but more uh, other cities that have midtowns which uh, sort of sprung up like a second downtown of sorts um, now, that's not really the case here, but seeing as the density is still going to be quite high, I think uh, it's something to keep in mind. So yeah, let me let me know in, in the comments if you've got a backstory for this area and uh, a suggestion. Um, I, I, I don't suggest going too much into detail of how the area is built up, because obviously we haven't really built it yet. And we can still, you know, I can still make changes to the plans for this area. Um, but uh, I'm really interested in hearing what you guys think. All right, as I said, I'm going to detail up this area a bit and I'm considering just removing these buildings entirely and creating a little park here. I think that is something that is uh, missing a bit. It's having these open spaces and I should probably have a park somewhere here in, uh, well, yeah, it's called Rosewood for now, but I should have a park here as well somewhere uh, to kind of, you know, just sort of open up the cityscape and uh, yeah, it, it, it just really breaks it up and I think I've used that to some extent uh, in this part of downtown and of course we've got Brickville Park here that sort of separates inner Brickville from outer Brickville. Um, so I think I'm going to continue using that over here. Then I'm going to detail up this promenade and, and the road network to just make it all look a bit better.
Alright, so can I just make a very careful disclaimer and, and state that this is the first time that I've ever used this uh, custom texture feature of procedural objects mod. Uh, so I know that some of the lines here are a bit wonky. Um, so it, it's mainly a proof of concept because I've never used it before and I thought that it would be cool to try out on a, uh, you know, a public square like this, which uh, has an, a bit of an odd shape. Um, so yeah, I, I might not keep this texture because it, you know, these tiles are insanely big and it was just a texture I found online, which while nice, uh, could probably be optimized in some editing software to, uh, to kind of fit the game better. Uh, but it was a lot of fun and uh, I can really see the, the power of uh, being able to replace textures. So what I basically did was that I just, I found uh, a decal uh, that you can low on raise so that it uh, it's only on the pavement and not on the actual road. I don't know, it wasn't this one, but there are a couple of decals that act like that. And then if you place it with procedural objects, um, like so, you can go more and you can say select texture and you can, uh, if you open this folder, you can place uh, textures, basically just uh, PNG files. You can select them, uh, and then you'll be able to um, to just you know uh, move them around so that they they look all right. But you need to start off with like a a decal that you can raise uh, enough so that it doesn't. Um, show on the road but just on the on the pavement which is obviously you know a couple of centimeters uh above ground um so so that's like the the prerequisite but then you when you've got that decal you can change the texture texture to whatever you like and while it was super finicky for me uh, i'm sure there are better ways to do this uh for some of the procedural objects experts out there uh, but for now i think i'm just gonna i'm gonna stick with it this just as a you know, uh, a, a, a kind of a, a symbol of uh, my first adventure into this feature. Um, yeah, <laughs> we're going to continue detailing this a little bit and then we're going to start placing some more buildings because uh, everything's turning into detail in this episode. <laughs> All right, so uh, first time that I've ever tried working with the texture replacement um, functionality in procedural objects in an attempt to use a custom texture for this uh, square here. Um, and I'm probably gonna replace it, but it's gonna stay now as a testimony to my very first attempt at doing this. Uh, and I mean, it adds a bit of character, makes it look a little more special. 
Um, so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna use this technique more in the future and probably with some better textures. Uh, I can see this didn't quite scale as well as I'd hoped. Uh, but for now, I really I really do like it. Um, what have we? We've also been uh, been doing some changes to the uh, the road layout. So I've started to dedicate some uh, uh, of the tram lanes to tram only, basically. Um, and I've used this uh, this kind of red theme throughout, which is also uh, one we are using, of course, for our bus stops. So that's like a theme in Conifera now. Uh, here we see a large like stretch of uh, dedicated tram roads that people don't really care about, it seems. Uh, <laughs> but generally, they stick to the rules, uh, the cars, uh, which uh, is nice. And I feel, yeah, it just it adds a bit more uh, of a uniqueness to the road layout. I didn't have a great reason for doing it, other than, of course, it's gonna it's gonna make uh, the trams move uh, faster through this area. Um, but you know, the main the main reason I did it was just aesthetics. I like how it kind of kind of breaks up um, the the roads and it, it almost looks as, as if this type of road is actually different from this one uh, or uh, but uh, in reality it's the same road network actually the only difference is that uh, this one has a tram stop which uh, then automatically removes the parking and adds the, the stop textures uh, and then it has my intersection uh, marking theme here or the, the preset that I put on which is of course the dedicated tram lines and these uh, bollards that separate lanes. Um, so that's that's why I did it. I really like the variety it adds. Uh, with that said, I've spent a lot of time in this episode pretty much just detailing and I'll be doing even more detailing uh, after uh, some time. So I think for now it's, it's time that we kind of jump out of the detailing mindset and uh, we start uh, we start building some more housing, uh, some more shops, some more high density residential and just start building out this this area just uh, just a bit more. Uh, probably won't get a ton more done in this episode, otherwise it's just gonna drag out, but uh, hopefully we can add some more housing.
guys so this area took a lot longer to do than i had planned for but i mean that's really just gonna be the case when you make a rebuilding a procedural object to to get better alignment then it just takes time um so we, yeah i'd hope to get more done in in this episode uh, but i i guess the the additions that we have added are actually really nice and i mean just look at these views i'm really happy with how port Douglas is, is turning out um and i, I kind of like this little these two small blocks here they you know they they really make for some cozy living um so i'd imagine that uh these areas are actually pretty desirable right because you've got sort of a, a quiet street here uh but you've got you know the the big city right at your doorstep so it's it's uh it's it's really for uh, for the the open uh, the the yuppie that really wants that urban lifestyle. Um, so what I'm gonna wrap up with is just doing uh, some light detailing, adding some more trees and planters because this area definitely needs some street side uh, trees. Uh, and then I'm gonna wrap up with moving down here and just detailing up this road and this promenade just a bit to uh, so we can get get this area a little more complete and i think that's sort of that's gonna sort of wrap it up um before we get into some hopefully juicy cinematics let's see
right, guys, that should sort of wrap up this episode. It's uh, probably going to turn into a way too long episode. And uh, I need to teach myself to make some shorter ones because you can probably imagine the amount of time it takes to create like hour long episodes, just the recording process and editing, finding good music, yada, yada. Yeah. Anyways, we finished up with uh, with even more detailing, um, some simple detailing of this uh, of this promenade using this nice planter network uh, makes it easy, and then just uh, lots of planters uh, and trees with the intersection marking tool, um, which uh, and I think it looks pretty nice. We've got a ton of trees throughout Coniferia, and that's that's just sort of a theme, and the the trip to New York certainly helped push that even further. And speaking of New York and some of the, the open squares in um, in Manhattan, uh, that also sort of inspired this uh, square here, which isn't really a square, but you know, whatever. Uh, as I said, I'm not really sure about this texture. It's the first time I've been using this uh, texture, custom texture uh, functionality with, uh, with PO, but for now I really just like that it's sort of unique and that I haven't done something like that before. Uh, as you guys saw here in the the final um, gameplay footage, I bumped up the uh, density here. I uh, replaced the two existing buildings here with some that were just a little more grandeur and uh, beautiful, and that's certainly an inspiration from uh, from Manhattan as well. Uh, you know, um, having you know property next to open squares and recreational areas like this uh, would uh, would probably result in areas like these being very very desirable uh, which is uh, really obvious here that you've had some some investors or bankers or what or whatever that has built some really beautiful buildings during the the, the early boom days of, uh, of Port Douglas. Uh, with that said it's really time to wrap up this episode if you've stuck with me this long Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'm really thankful for that. If you want even more Coniferia content, I've got a Patreon uh, where the first tier is uh, $1 a month and all tiers have the same uh, uh, goodies. So it doesn't matter what you choose. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to your naming suggestions for, for this, uh, this district here. Uh, and I also need a name uh, for this park actually here in... Um, in, on the edge of downtown Port Douglas or Square or whatever it is. Um, so um, feel free to join in on the comments and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.